they may have forgotten the most important thing of all, which is the rule of supply and demand. Houses with no people doesn't solve the problem. When one thinks of an empty city, a horror movie scene usually comes to mind. One might also think of a post-apocalyptic movie set. But what if empty cities were a thing? Have you ever wondered what it would feel like to cross an entire town with no one around? Well, that's a thing in China where ghost cities are being built at a super rapid pace. From the super futuristic Ordos Kangbashi district to China's very own London called Thames Town. Here's the truth about China's futuristic ghost cities. <sighs> Number 20, reason why China has so many ghost cities. China houses many ghost cities that are frantically built to accommodate an unfinished rural exodus. Some will fill up due to overpopulation, while others might take decades to populate or even remain lifeless museums forever. China's ghost cities showcase the country's building overcapacity and its poor resource allocation. Studies have shown that every Chinese provincial capital is currently building four to five new districts. This will enable China to welcome 3.4 billion people which is almost three times more than its current population. However, these districts often become ghost cities occupied by no one and where economic activities are completely numb. An MIT study even estimates that there are 50 empty cities in China to this day, and more are to come. But why is China constructing so many new empty neighborhoods? On the one hand, building allows local governments to generate GDP. The country says that over time, these empty spaces will inevitably be filled up by an ever-growing population. We have a building with this style design. It's like a rocky finish right next to this tower. On the other hand, building these new districts is essential for governors as it attracts rural residents and competes with other provincial cities. One thing is for sure, if the world ever attains a point of no return in terms of overpopulation, China will have space to offer. That's just Truth about China's futuristic ghost cities. Number 19, Ordos Kangbashi District. Built for over a million people, the city of Ordos was originally intended to be an important city in Mongolia. Forever unfinished, this futuristic metropolis in northern China stood empty of inhabitants for a long period. In fact, only 2% of its buildings had been filled. The rest was largely left behind and abandoned in the middle of construction. This earned Ordos the title of China's greatest ghost town. Today, it has developed well, and its GDP per capita has placed it among the leaders in the country. It has gradually become a tourist attraction, particularly for its beautiful, desertic landscapes in the surrounding area, but also for its amazing district called Kangbashi. This neighborhood of Ordos was built on the north bank of the Wulan Mulun River. Kangbashi attracts many visitors for its spacious layout, innovative monuments, and skyscrapers that were mostly built in the 2010s. This newly residential area includes an opera theater in the shape of a Mongolian hat, a library that evokes three inclined books, as well as a museum with aerodynamic shapes and a wooden exterior that was inspired by a piece of charcoal. This museum tells the history of Mongolia from prehistoric times to ethnic peoples. Finally, Kangbashi is also home to the great Kangbashi Bridge which is an architectural piece made of suspension bridges that are 1,005 meters long with two pillars 129 meters high. Number 18, Thamestown. Imagine if the city of London was teleported in the middle of China. Sounds crazy, but it actually happened. Near Shanghai, a city called Thamestown emerged recently. This massive neighborhood looks exactly like a British town. It has cobbled streets, red telephone booths, Victorian villas, canals, and small parks all over it. Since 2001, urban planners of Shanghai decided to find solutions to relieve the city from its overpopulated areas. They therefore decided to build nine new neighborhoods with modern and fully equipped houses around Shanghai. In this context, Thamestown was built in 2006. The city can accommodate 10,000 residents on more than one square kilometer. Apartments and houses now sell for the price of 45,000 RMB per square meter. Not so long ago, Thamestown was considered to be a complete ghost town as there were no easy ways to commute there. A few years ago, the terminus of Line 9 was extended and has considerably brought the city closer to the center. 
Thamestown is now attracting businesses and visitors in China. Number 17, Ghost City of Chenggong near Kunming, China. It's a weekend, it's the middle of the day, it's not raining, there are hundreds of apartments, and yet the streets are virtually deserted. Chenggong was designed in 2003 as a suburb to accommodate the overflow of Kunming, a city of almost 6.5 million inhabitants, located in the Yunnan province. This city is supposed to accommodate 100,000 people. All of Chengdong's buildings are brand new and ready for use, but were entirely left abandoned, transforming the city into a ghost town. Chengdong is filled with towers that overlook immense squares with monumental works of art. 450 meter long blocks of gated communities are found all over this town. They are delimited by main roads and parking spots. Many institutions such as the Kunming City Hall and university campuses have been relocated to Chengdong. But despite the multiple attempts by the authorities to attract new residents, a very small community of students, workers, and night guards actually live there, while others simply drive to work from downtown Kunming. Number 16, Yumen Ghost Town. In China, many cities have been built near oil or mining resources for economic purposes. However, once these resources are exhausted, they are usually left abandoned. This is the case of the city of Yumen which is located in the province of Gansu at the border of the Gobi Desert. It was originally built in 1955 for exploitation purposes since there was a source of oil nearby. Yunmen was to be the first oil exploitation center in China. Since 2004, oil resources have reached their limits and exploitation ceased. Since then, the city has emptied itself and more than 130,000 inhabitants of its city left. Today, Yunmen looks like a strange movie set or a haunted city. It's filled with similar blocks of building, dilapidated by time and dust, along with urban spaces that are all abandoned by Chinese socialism. Number 15, Tian Ducheng. Entire cities designed to look like Paris, Venice, London, even Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Tian Ducheng is a neighborhood in the suburb of Hangzhou in China. It was built in 2007 and is a perfect copy of Paris, except that Unlike the French capital, the streets of Tianchundeng are practically empty. The city was nicknamed the Paris of the East and is a luxury real estate development in the Shijiang province that was designed to evoke the classic charm of Europe. All of the great Parisian monuments are replicated there. The buildings are practically all constructed following the French neoclassical architecture style and all the great Parisian monuments are replicated. That's right, Tian Duncheng has its own Arc de Triomphe, Champs d'Elysees Square, and Luxembourg Gardens Fountain. But what's mostly surprising is that the city houses the second largest replica of the Eiffel Tower in the world, preceded by that of the Paris Las Vegas Hotel in Nevada in the United States. 10 years ago, when Tian Duncheng first opened, it was a ghost town. Many homes are still empty, but the population numbers several thousand and receives a constant flow of Chinese and international tourists. Number 14, the Xiong'an New Area. What if the perfect city existed? It might be the case in China. On April 1st, 2017, the Chinese government decided to establish the Xiong'an New Area in the Hebei province. This new area will compete with China's greatest cities. Today, the crazy design and master plan of the Xiong'an New Area have already turned into reality and the construction of the new area is progressing at a rapid pace. A great city has already begun to take shape. Although the city is a ghost town for now, it is expecting more than 200 projects, which represent a total investment of 700 billion yuan, equivalent to $110 billion. The new area will welcome between two to 2.5 million people, providing quality resources in education and healthcare services. Xiong'an's new area also aims to be a model of progress and improvement. Its construction plan follows strict rules regarding the architectural style and the general appearance of the city by banning eccentric buildings, skyscrapers, and glass curtain walls in the area. Moreover, this futuristic city will be ecologically conscious and will have 30, 267 hectares of planted trees with parks all over the city and forests that will be three kilometers away from residential areas. Number 13, Kaofei Dian, the Chinese eco-city that became a ghost town. Eco-city projects are multiplying in China, and Kaofei Dian was one of them. This city is located near Thangshan in the Hebei province. Back in 2004, Kaofei Dian was one of China's biggest eco-city projects. 
It consisted of an island capable of welcoming at least one million people. For this purpose, the island was expanded and thousands of buildings were being built. Among them, an entire mall that looked like it was designed as if it was straight out of sweet little Italian town, hospitals, schools, and more. However, since the cost of raw materials rose, the project got suspended as it was mainly relying on bank loans. The cost of this abandoned city is estimated at a billion dollars. Although the original plans of Kaufadian include green spaces, trees, and modern buildings, this eco-city is now filled with uncompleted buildings where only a few thousand people live. Kaufadian joins China's long list of ghost towns. Number 12. Jingjin New Town Jingjin City is a satellite city located an hour away from Beijing. This entire city counts more than 3,000 villas, but most of them are empty. That's right, the Jingjin Highway, which connects Beijing and Tianjin, passes through Jingjin City. In addition to the villas, the complex spans over 54 square kilometers and includes a five-star hotel, hot springs, a golf course, a museum, a temple, two universities, and entertainment venues. However, the city is largely deserted. Its main street is completely empty, and the businesses that sometimes open usually close in a few days due to the lack of customers. <laughs> Someone heard of market research? This is partly due to the fact that the commuting from Jingjin to Beijing and Tianjin is not practical. However, despite the fact that Jingjin is a ghost town, some buildings are still being constructed. Who knows? It might get populated one day. Number 11. Chinese Ghost Town of Mansions Reclaimed by Farmers In China, an entire neighborhood of mansions is deserted. The state guest mansions were built around 2010 and intended to house China's elite classes. Today, the only people living there are herds of cattle and occasional travelers who wander around the massive stone facades and the verandas of hundreds of abandoned villas. The space is now being used by farmers. Plowed lands are now dividing all of the lavish mansions. These abandoned villas are situated in Xingyang's Hills, which is approximately 650 kilometers northeast of Beijing. It was constructed by Greenland Group, a Shanghai-based real estate developer. However, the project came to a crashing halt in less than two years, leaving the entire royalty mansions to dust and time. The dilapidated estates are still vacant today, arranged in a spooky grid that resembles a cornfield in architecture. This whole neighborhood looks like a perfect Halloween movie set. Number 10. Yu Jiapu and Xiang Luo Wan Did you know that there's another New York City located in China? Except this one is completely empty. That's right. The districts of Yu Jiapu and Xiang Luo Wan were supposed to be the busiest neighborhoods of Tianjin, which is China's fourth biggest city. Yu Jiapu started running in 2009. The initial goal was to construct a sizable financial district within 10 years. It would serve as the economic center of northern China by acting as a basis for financial services and a hub for financial reform and innovation. Construction started in 2007 on Xiang Luo Wan, which is located next to Yu Jiapu and across the river. In Binhai New Area, it was planned to serve as a hub for businesses from other cities and the federal government to establish their offices, corporate headquarters, and research facilities. With their skyscrapers, their large avenues, and giant buildings, Yu Jiapu and Xiang Luo Wan were referred to as China's Manhattan during the development stages. Today, these districts look like they're straight from The Walking Dead. Imagine a post-apocalyptic NYC where ghosts or zombies might come down the streets and scare you off. This is Yu Jiapu and Xiang Luo Wan. Even at night, when the streets and avenues are fully lit, nobody is around. Number nine. Boten, a Chinese casino ghost town in Laos. Boten Golden City was built in 2004 on the border with China. This Chinese version of Las Vegas offered hundreds of casinos, luxury hotels, restaurants, and massage parlors where you could basically get way more than a massage. This whole project was launched in 2004 on 1640 hectares of tropical forest in a special economic zone. But guess what? The city entirely closed down due to mafia and in 2011, the government of the Yunnan province had to put a stop to the activities of this golden city. Entire buildings, homes, and infrastructure are now abandoned. The reasons for failure are classic. Ruined players committed or perished. Bad payers were eliminated by mafia henchmen. Number 8. 
Nanhui New City. A full-scale independent new metropolis called Nanhui is being created, 60 kilometers outside of Shanghai's central business district. Only 50,000 people live in Nanhui. However, it is developing and being built to eventually house more than 800,000 people. This is why it looks like a ghost city. The project of Nanhui started back in 2003. One of Nanhui's project managers said that the main source of inspiration for the design of the city was the image of a drop falling into the water with tiny waves of circles that it creates. This circular city is filled with green spaces, European-like city centers, and entire malls. All of the streets are, however, empty. Nanhui emerged from the ocean a couple of decades ago when Shanghai was being rebuilt, and over two million people lost their homes. These people were relocated. Meanwhile, the government decided to build other nearby cities, such as Nanhui. Nanhui also serves to support the nearby Yangshan Free Trade Zone, which is filled with ports and industrial zones. Many people work at the Yangshan Free Trade Zone, and some of them are expected to live in Nanhui. Number seven, Hotowan. The town of Hotowan was once home to a thriving community of 2,000 fishermen on the island of Shengshan. Now abandoned, streets and brick houses have offered themselves to nature. Hotowan is now filled with wild grasses and creeping plants which cover all the houses and buildings with an impressive green blanket. The only thing that today disrupts the reconquest of the village by this lush vegetation is the crowds of tourists. In this island town located 140 kilometers from Shanghai, Tourists come to admire the magical setting and the panoramas of the East China Sea. Hotowan was founded in 1950 and thrived on fishing with a population of up to 3,000. The only way to connect Hotowan to the rest of the island was to hike along a winding path. Over the years, its port proved too small to accommodate large ships, which ended up avoiding the village. Once people started to gain enough money, they gradually moved to the city. In recent years, selfie-loving tourists have been able to wander freely through Hotowan but since 2017, the authorities have required the purchase of an entry ticket of 50 yuan, 6 euros and 70 cents, and visitors are forced to follow a marked route in this village, frozen in time. Number 6. Lanzhou New Area In the Dashi Bay region, more than 1,500 kilometers from Beijing, the Chinese government decided to build its sixth national development zone the work began in 2011, but everything accelerated in August 2012. The new area of Lanzhou obtained direct funding from the Chinese state and to put in place tax incentive measures to attract businesses. Today, Lanzhou is still a gigantic open-air construction site, crisscrossed by deserted six-lane highways. Through the dust, we can nevertheless see a few factories, notably those of the Chinese car manufacturer Geely, and everywhere there are hundreds of cranes that are working day and night. Once completed in 2030, the Lanzhou New Area should extend over more than 800 kilometers squared. To give you an idea, this is eight times the size of Paris. It will be able to accommodate one million people compared to 150,000 at present. Beijing is banking on the strategic location of Lanzhou which was an ancient stop on the traditional Silk Road. This new city will aim at modernizing the surrounding farms to create more growth and attract new investors. The new area alone should generate 150 billion yuan of GDP within the next 10 years. Number five, Angolan Ghost City. Did you know that there was a Chinese ghost city in the middle of Africa? The name of this place is Nova Cidade de Colomba, and it was a brand new city made of brightly colored and impeccable buildings. It was built in less than three years and is located 30 kilometers away from Luanda, capital of Angola in Africa. Nova Cidade de Quilomba is mostly empty. This urban complex is now a ghost town built by a Chinese state company, China International Trust and Investment Corporation, CITIC, for around $3.5 billion. Nova Cidade de Quilamba was supposed to welcome at least 500,000. This new deserted city is the work of the Chinese state, which was paid in return with priority access to the country's natural resources, like oil. Technically, this pharaonic project was paid for by the Angolan government. The problem is that no one comes. 
Of the 2,800 apartments initially available in the 758 story buildings, only 220 were sold. Although many schools were built, only a handful of them are currently functioning. The problem is that the residences of Nova Cidade de Quilamba cost between $120,000 and $200,000, which is mostly inaccessible for the vast majority of the Angolan population that mostly live on less than $2 per day. The project is still advertised by the government. Who knows, it might be populated one day. Number four, China's Wonderland. Not far from Beijing, there is a creepy, ruined castle located in the middle of nowhere. It's actually Wonderland, an abandoned amusement park in Chenzhuang in the Nankou City. The park is one of these unusual places that gives you goosebumps, as it could be a horror movie set. Wonderland was initially designed to be one of the largest amusement parks in Asia, covering an area of 123 hectares. The project was proposed by a real estate developer based in Thailand called Rainwood Group and was to create a park as large and popular as Disneyland. But unfortunately, the project fell through and construction of the park stopped in 1998, following financial problems with local officials. Despite an attempt to resume construction in 2008, the park is today nothing more than a skeleton of a dream. The site contains many abandoned buildings, including the structure of a castle-like building and other medieval buildings. It was reclaimed by local farmers who cultivate the land between the buildings. The abandonment of a project of such size has raised concerns about the existence of a real estate bubble in China. The buildings were demolished in 2013 and since September 2015, the site has been home to a shopping center. This shopping center has two parking lots, a main parking lot which was destroyed and then rebuilt, and a second parking lot located at the rear of the center. Imagine shopping there. Parts of the castle are still standing and Chinese farmers continue to exploit the land around the castle. Number three, Dinosaurs Fairyland. Would you believe us if we told you that Jurassic Park is actually a thing? That's right, there is an entire dinosaur-themed park in China. China Dinosaurs Park is located in Changzhou in the province of Jiangsu. It opened in April 2001 after two years of construction work and investments of $40 million. China Dinosaurs Park saw the largest expansion in its history in 2010. <laughs> it inaugurated a new area including full-scale dinosaur models, real and fake bones, and 10 new attractions. However, due to fact that it is located 20 kilometers outside the town of Elian, Dinosaur Fairyland doesn't attract that many people and looks like a ghost amusement park. In 2011, China Dinosaurs Park saw the largest increase in attendance globally at 52.2%. Despite the fact that the site is sort of empty, it still welcomes some visitors and is 11th in the ranking of the 20 most visited amusement parks in Asia. Number two, the Fushan Tunnels. Now we're just the lights are ready. Okay. I'm gonna go in the tunnels. Oh, that was a dime store. A bunch of tunnels are hidden underneath a mountain in China. These tunnels are located under Mount Fu and are called the Fushan Tunnels. They were drilled on specific locations for defensive purposes. But why? Well, it all started back in 1989 when German immigrants were occupying the nearby port of Qingdao. These immigrants left a number of underground fortifications behind that were probably built to defend the territory in case of a British invasion from Hong Kong. At least three distinct tunnel networks with varied sizes, levels of complexity, and amenities were constructed. Some areas of this underground labyrinth are made out of bare rock corridors that lead to lookout towers and gun turrets, while other areas have reinforced bulkhead doors, electricity, and basic air conditioning. The Germans also left a couple of buildings behind, and this is why one can find a Bavarian quarter, St. Michael's Cathedral, and other colonial places that stand out in the middle of China. There's even a brewery that produces what is perhaps the best beer in China using German-inherited brewing methods. In 1914, following the siege of Qingdao, the Germans left Qingdao, feeling compelled to return home as tensions in Europe grew. Japanese imperial authority over the city and its tunnels lasted until 1922. The Fushan tunnels now bear the imprint of each consecutive occupancy of Qingdao, with enlargements, new entrances, and steadily more modern amenities being installed throughout the years. The tunnels were allegedly used as a special forces training facility and artillery storage during World War II. This function would later be carried out between 1966 and 1976. 
during Mao's Cultural Revolution. The tunnels have been abandoned since that time. The top of Fushan has up to a dozen separate entrances, many of which are currently obscured by vegetation and boulders. Number one, Fengdu Ghost City. The ghost town of Fengdu is located on the north bank of the Yangtze River on the Mingshan Hill, about 170 kilometers from Chongqing. Today, it has become a popular tourist destination in the Chongqing region for its uniqueness and the myths that revolve around its history, rich in culture and belief regarding the afterlife. The history of Fengdu dates back from 2,000 years ago when the Han Dynasty was ruling over the country. Legend has it that during the Tang era, 618 to 907, the city became the city of demons. It is said that the ancient city was submerged underwater during the construction of a dam. After that, the city was completely restored and became a large historical complex. By going to Mingshan Mountain, the so-called Sacred Hill, one can discover many temples. Mingshan Hill, which houses the ancient city of Fengdu, was dedicated to the afterlife and is home to a special culture dedicated to ghosts, but also to the master Tianzi, called the Son of Heaven. It is also said that the souls of all find themselves in this place after and that they pass before 18 judges in order to be purified. In a Taoist legend, it is said that it was two officials of the imperial court who introduced, practiced the Taoist religion on the Mingshan Mountain. They later became immortals. The ghost town of Fengdu covers an area of 29,000 square kilometers and has approximately 780,000 inhabitants. One can find the so-called largest haunted castle in China there, along with statues of the King of Ghosts and also the largest cemetery of the Han Dynasty. Around the city, there are many trees dating from past centuries and several temples from different Chinese religions, such as Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. The alleys are filled with statues of demons, scenes of torture, and also statues of the god of the afterlife named Yin Wang. On the south bank of the river, there's also a jade cave that is often visited by tourists. In addition, the must-see places of the site are the Nothing to be Done Bridge, the Ghost Torturer Pass, and the Tianzi Palace. According to the belief and concept of the afterlife in China, one must pass through these three places in order to access the underworld. The site also offers an adventure-rich cruise on the Yangtze with different activities such as Tai Chi classes, acupuncture, and traditional Chinese massages. What other ghost cities are there in China? Would you live in any of them? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.